So box breathing is a technique that um, military uses. I'm sure other people use it too. Uh, notably, the Navy SEALs um, as a means to counter anxiety. So clients will ask me all the time, uh, how can I manage my anxiety or panic um, without medications or in addition to medications? Um, what to do when you're having a panic attack, essentially? Uh, how do you get yourself out of it? One of the things that the Navy SEALs realize in their training when they're in combat situations that are highly anxiety provoking, I would imagine, is um, how to basically counter the panic um, through a technique of minding your breathing. So box breathing is a specific technique where you inhale for four seconds and visualize going up one side of a box hold it for four seconds, going down along the top of the box, exhale for four count, going down the other side of the box, and then holding once again, completing the, the box breath, right? The, the box breathing cycle. Um, when you do that, as we've talked about um, in relation to flow states, um, you're actually getting out of your own way your basically creating a method where you're controlling the inputs and outputs, the knobs and the dials of the user interface of your mind to create a physiological response that promotes certain changes of cognition and neurochemistry. That's kind of wordy. <laughs> so you have to understand that you can approach the mind as a closed operating system like your iPhone, right? <clears throat> or um, actually visualize it or conceive it as a user interface that you can uh, turn the knobs and flick the switches and you'll get a physiological response that can uh, hopefully improve the situation. Most people don't look at it that way. They figure their mind is just a closed system and they're just at the mercy of whatever thoughts or anxieties, fears, depression that pop up. So you have to realize you're not your thoughts. There's a gap between your thoughts and emotions and your actions. You have to do something in order to feel better. And one of the techniques that you can use on the fly, in the field, anywhere, in the field if you're in the military, but anywhere, is using mindful breathing, in this case box breathing, to quiet the anxiety. Um, physiologically, you're stimulating the vagus nerve and the parasympathetic nervous system to calm you down. It's essentially what they're doing. So how does that help with performance and creativity? If you want to get into a high performance cognitive state, then, which is, which is preferable, by the way, than just doing something, you can actually prime yourself to achieve a task by turbo boosting with your own neurochemistry by accessing your own neurophysiology okay so you do things and you engage things in a manner that release neurochemicals the same neurochemicals that the meds work work to release norepinephrine dopamine serotonin oxytocin anandamide and when you engage the obstacle you're able to function at a higher level because you've released your physiology and unlocked your mind to perform it at the highest level. So you'll shift cognitive states. Where creativity comes in and is boosted is through this process of engaging the obstacle with a performance-based mindset, you can enter a thing that's called a flow state. A flow state basically allows you to experience transient hypofrontality where you uncouple the prefrontal cortex, your critical mind, your extrinsic system, the mind that we're using to go through this conversation and that's plotting and when's he gonna get to the point and all that. You basically dim that, like this light over here, I always try to dim it and nothing, oh, there it goes, right? So when you dim that system, the one that, that your rational critical mind, it lets the other system, let's say it's this light over here, it shines brighter in comparison, right? 
So as the extrinsic system or your critical mind goes offline, you're freed from its criticism because its criticism doesn't stop with criticizing, being critical about what's going on. It also is critical in your performance of it, which is distracting. When you get distracted with automatic negative thoughts or self-criticism, I'm gonna bring my extrinsic system back into the game, then you're likely gonna lose your attention and attention is the key in the ignition to getting this whole thing going. If you can't focus, you can't get into flow. If you can't get into flow, you can't be turbo boosted in your efforts to perform at sometimes superhuman levels. You can still get things done, but it's at a great cost to your you know, physical and mental health at times. Or you turbo boost, you hit the turbo boost, you power up, and then go do whatever you gotta do. So the thing that box breathing would allow is you to get into a, the present moment from all of the places that your mind wants to go, especially in combat, I would imagine, right? To focus on the situation so that you can get into a flow state and perform at a high level. This has been um, dramatized in movies where you see SEAL Team 6 go in or you know whatever military unit go in and they're moving in a choreographed fashion that seems as if they're one, right? One person's looking this way, somehow the other person's looking this way and they're moving in a very synchronized fashion. For cinematography, that is choreographed, but it happens in real life to an even greater degree when these units get into group flow, and the military will use these flow states to, as well as Fortune 500 companies, to basically get their um, soldiers or um, employees into highly um, optimized, performance states, it just so happens that when you get that cognitive decoupling, um, it's, a, it's basically an efficiency um, conversion. It's a, it converts the efficiency by now bringing up that intrinsic part of your mind, the unconscious part of your mind, to solve problems. And that's also enhanced by your neurochemistry and and by your um, actually your brain waves like which brain waves are happening if you put on electrodes on the on the brain and measure these things or on the on the head and measure these things so you'll stimulate physiology that and and neurochemistry that actually support and enhance creativity in these altered states of consciousness you're getting full access to the unconscious mind and that unconscious mind has neural circuitry that expands the entirety of, of the brain. So it has unlimited bandwidth compared to the critical mind, the extrinsic system, that basically is tapped out if you have the total of three people talking to you at once. If you're in a situation socially where that's happening, you're not going to notice, you know, much of anything past that. Another example of that would be learning how to drive a stick shift. When you're driving a stick shift car, when you first are learning it, you're using your extrinsic system, your critical thought process, your more highly evolved mind, right? And it's slow, it's plodding, it's jerky, it's back and forth, it's, it's painful at times when that shifts and you get that energetic uncoupling of the cogn of the the critical mind you get that conversion that efficiency conversion people experience like oh i just do it automatically now i don't even think when i'm shifting i know the clutch i know the burn point on the clutch i know when to let off the gas when to let off the brake i know when to move the the stick shift okay it just happens automatically when you were first starting out, you couldn't even play the radio or carry on a conversation while you're going through this very plotting, I really gotta pay attention to this type of um, mechanics and logistics. But at some point it just becomes automatic. You're not even aware that you're doing it anymore. So that's, that's a, a very common example and I think it illustrates nicely shifting between apps on your user interface as you use different cognitive states to uh, overcome hard goals. 
the breathing is allowing you to actually focus and the focus is the key to begin the whole process because if you can't focus on anything I just said then you're not going to get there 